hello and welcome to whoever happened to stumble upon this video or come back to my channel. Hello, my name is Dana and I'm very happy to have you here today. So today I'm going to be doing another Redbubble video and if you're like, another? I've never seen you before and I haven't seen any of your other videos. Well, I have a couple of Redbubble videos up on my channel so I would recommend checking those out if you have not already. But in those videos, specifically my original how to make stickers video, you guys have left me a ton of really great comments and questions. So I'm going to be making more stickers with new ways that you guys have showed me and also hopefully answering some of the questions you guys might have had in another video. Also to my returners, I'm wearing my glasses today. So that's new, <laughs> but let's get started. So I'm going to screen record on my computer. And what I'm gonna be showing you guys today is I've got a lot of comments about photo pee, which I had never heard of before, but I heard it's a good way to make some stickers. So I'm going to be showing you guys that since I have tested it out. And then what I have done on photo pee, I can also do on Fonto. So I wanted to give you guys that option as well. And this method really works more, at least for me, for making text stickers but these are more photo editor apps or photo p is a desktop browser so it's not an app but you know what i'm saying so these are more for photo editing so not as much drawing so if you want to make stickers that way check out my other video but this is more for editing pre-existing images you have or making stickers solely with text so i pull up my computer first off we are starting with photo p all right so what i'm gonna do first off is I'm just gonna go into new project and I'm just gonna say red bubble. And I'm gonna make this kind of big. I'm gonna do just like 3000 by 3000 because if your images are too small, your pixels, red bubble can't put it on as many things. So if you're just making for stickers, that's not a big deal, but you wanna have your products available as like pillows and phone cases and t-shirts because you can get more revenue off of those. And if you're looking for specific dimensions, ooh, I messed up, but I'll explain it in a second. If you're looking for specific dimensions on Redbubble, you can Google their image dimensions for certain things, like for a tapestry, for example, or an art print, and then you can use those specific dimensions, but I usually just make them large. So I'm just gonna make a new one, and what I wanna do is make the background transparent. All right, so this is kind of what it looks like. Apparently, this is really similar in setup to Photoshop, I have never used Photoshop before, but that is what I've heard in my kind of research on PhotoP. So if you are a Photoshop user, this might look very familiar to you. If not, then you are probably like me and we're really confused, but I have kind of played around with this for a while and hopefully I can offer some insight to you guys. So like I said, I'm just gonna be doing text stickers. So I'm gonna start out by clicking the text and make a text box. So what I did already, and you can do this by hitting load font, and then downloading in a font from your computer is I downloaded in my fave font, which if you've seen any of my other videos, you would see me use. Okay, so I'm going to T, C, and J. I'm gonna do 20, 20, one. So that's me. And then I'm gonna highlight it because I don't know about you, but I can't see any of that. And then I'm gonna change it to my font and make the font size real big. All right. And I just want to center it. So as you see, real basic, so we have right now. So now that I have my text in, I'm going to mess around with my colors. So down here, this little paper, I'm going to add a new layer. So you want to make sure you're doing this on a separate layer. So for my T, C, and J, I'm going to do a yellow and blue. So I'm going to click on the paintbrush over here and on the brush. I kind of like this airbrushy number seven one over here. Turn up the size a lot. And then I already made a yellow, but you just go over to color, just click on brush again, make that go away, and you click on the color. So I'm gonna kind of put this in the middle on both the TCNJ and the 21. And then I'm gonna make like a dark blue, which I like that, and put this on the other side. So then I'm gonna blur the colors together. All right, so just kind of laying down the color. Then you can do, I don't really like, put that a little low, so you just control Z to undo that. 
and you can really do whatever colors you want and you can do a bunch of different colors you can make a nice rainbow depending on whatever you want your sticker to say and the style of it all right so now that i kind of have that down i'm going to go back to my clicker and then you're going to go to filter blur and then i'm going to do whatever the one that starts with the g I'm not going to try and say it because i know i'm going to say it wrong but that option and you're just going to turn it up until you kind of like how blurry it is and that's really personal preference so and you don't want to blur it too much that it becomes not opaque anymore but so i'm going to turn mine down a little bit and this is like so slow because i'm screen recording while doing it so it's making it really slow if you're just normally making a sticker it shouldn't be as slow as mine is right now all right so i'm going to hit okay on that and then i'm going to go into layer and hit clipping mask and that is going to put my colors on top of my words that were in the layer underneath it so i think the best way to do this is to do it when you first type in your text so i already have i still have my box selected and then i can go into warp and you have a ton of options, so click right there by style. You can arc your text. Oh my God, that's like huge. <laughs> you can change how much you want it to bend as well. You can make it bulge. So I would maybe bet a little more. And this you're kind of changing the bend, I guess you'd call it. You can make it a little flag. I like that, and that looks kind of cool. And you can also distort it vertically and horizontally as well. So I'm gonna put that back to zero. Okay, or one, it's fine. And then I'm just really quickly gonna go back in and redo my colors. You guys already watched me do that. All right, so after a little bit of trial and error, here is my sticker. So basically the order in which you wanna do things to make it easiest, the little recap, so you're gonna add in your text. Just click your little text box over here. If you wanna upload in your own font, you can do that. Type it in, change the font size, the warp if you want to, add another layer, draw that in, blur it, and then clip it. So there's probably an easier way to save this, but from what I did, I just command and clicked on all the layers, hit download as PNG, and it gave me them all together in a transparent image. That is how I used photo P to make that sticker. And then real quick before I get into how to make kind of similar stickers with Fonto, I'm going to answer a question that I get all the time. And I responded to a bunch of them, but I'm just gonna say it in this video as well. When you upload on Redbubble, all you are responsible for is uploading the art, that's it. You don't have to make anything, you don't have to ship anything, you don't have to do anything. You upload the art, Redbubble does all the rest, which is part of why Redbubble is so great and so easy to use because they do all of the manufacturing, shipping, everything like that. Printing is all done by them and then they'll just send you your cut of the profits. So hopefully that answers that question for a lot of you because I know a lot of people were asking me that. So next up, I'm going to go into Fonto, which is an app I have on my phone. First is I'm gonna go into Adobe Draw and just save a transparent image that's about the size that I want it to be. Again, I'm doing like 3000 by 3000. So save this image to use kind of as my transparent background when I'm working in Fonto. So, cause you have to upload, so I'm uploading from my photo albums and then I'm just gonna, it looks white, but it is transparent. So you just click to add text and click your fonts. I have keep on trucking downloaded into this as well. So you can install your own fonts and it'll tell you if you click how to install fonts, how to do so. It's pretty simple. I download these, this onto my computer and on my phone from defont.com. They have tons of fonts, but also Fonto has like a bajillion for you to choose from. Going to click keep on check in and then I will do red bubble stickers rule. Probably not gonna upload this one, so it's just for us. And then you have a ton of options of things you can do. You can, I usually go into style and that's where you can change the color. You can upload in your own colors if you click on this three right here. 
So you, I will click this and add them in from the HTML color codes or if you draw in Adobe Draw, you can look at the color that's RGB and then add in the numbers from that onto here. So you have the same colors in your image. So this is again, if you're uploading from images, I hope this makes sense. So I'm just gonna explain really quick in case it doesn't. So in Adobe Draw, what I'll do is I'll draw. So you see I have some random little stickers in here and I'll take the file and I'll save it to my phone as a transparent image and then upload that into Fonto the same way I did this plain image and then you can just type your words into there. So you can't draw in Fonto itself, same with in Photopea, at least for my experience using it. And then you can add in text to pre-existing images or just make stickers that are plain text. So let's say I pick this blue and then you can go into stroke and if you want, usually for stroke I'll just do black I'll do white for this example or gray. You can do any any color. Let's do a dark blue, spice it up. And then I usually, and it's hard to see right now because background's black, so actually I'll do white just so you guys can see. And you can make it bigger, turn up the width. Also, I like to go into style. You can give an alpha, so, and I usually turn the blur down all the way. And that's where we have this background. You can blur it if you want to. And I usually, you can move it around, up and down or side to side using the X and Y and go into spacing. And if you want your text to be a little spaced out, you can. So that's kind of a little bit. You can also make the size bigger. And then also you can tilt it so you can make it spin it all around. And this works well if you have it aligned with an image. So if you want to tilt it under your image or inside of an image. And then another thing is you can scroll and go to curve and you can curve so my text is a couple of layers long. You can curve it into a circle if you want to. So that's cool to go all the way around an image and anything like that. So I think Fonto is super easy to use. You don't have that same color gradient, which actually I think you might be able to do in here as well. Let's take a look. Create color pattern. So yeah, you can do patterns of colors and I think, no, I don't think you can do gradients, but if I wanted to, kind of add in different, I can do that, create patterns for colors to make them go like that. So you can go in a different, I don't know why I was about to show you, I'm screen recording this. So you can do that to kind of switch it up. I don't think you can do the same gradients like you can do on Photo P, but you have a lot of options. You can just change it back or make your own color patterns. Horizontal, ooh, vertical. So you can do gradients, okay. So yeah, if you click it on vertical and then you can um, remove them if you want to and replace these with whatever color you want. So you can kind of do a similar thing to what you can do on Photopea. So it's just user preference. I've used Fonto a lot, so I think it's easiest for me, but I know some of you guys recommended Photopea for stickers. And then this is another way. If you saw my original video, you can do words like this instead of downloading it or taking screenshots off of Fonto and drawing them in Adobe Draw. I learned this method after I made that video, so this is a bit easier. And also you can kind of move it around in your pictures. So it's really whatever is easiest for you. Hopefully this answered some of your guys' questions on stickers, gave you some new ways to make stickers. If you have any questions that I did not answer, comment down below and I will get back to you. If you wanna comment your Redbubble down below, feel free to do so, but give us a little something, a little bit about what kind of stickers you make. So don't just drop your link or drop your username. Let us know what kind of stuff you make and what we should check out. Check out my Redbubble if you're interested. I make a lot of kind of medical stickers and then college theme stickers, some little groovy stickers. Check them out if you're interested. Subscribe if you have not already. Turn on that notification bell so you know when I post. I post every Sunday and Wednesday. Like this video if you liked this video and I hope to see you next time.